So one of the first things, now some of these are basic materials, so I like to have an actual space in the classroom where I keep the science materials. So I call that a science center, and it's a place where kids can go to free explore those materials, so it's independent practice. So if you use these materials, if you're doing a science experiment with the kids, and then they can have access to these materials afterwards if it's appropriate uh, for them to do so, if you know if, if the materials are age appropriate and safe for them to use, you can put these in your science center so they can free explore because science concepts are not learned by watching the teacher do. They're learned by touching and feeling and manipulating and coming kind of to your own conclusions. So my biggest memory of science was the sixth grade and I was one of the tallest kids in my class. I'm not very tall now, but at the time I was. And we had about 30 something kids in our class. And I sat in the back row, the very, very, very back row, because I was the one of the tallest kids. And our teacher used to do science experiments on her desk in the front of the classroom. So imagine there was more than 30 of us in the room, so that's quite a distance. And she would do science experiments, and I absolutely could not see a Thing. And I think I learned nothing about science in the sixth grade because I wasn't able to touch and manipulate and actually see it. It was terrible. So think about your little kids and how they learn best and they learn best through hands-on experiences. So, so you're going to want to have a science center so they can free explore and investigate. I know that small classroom size is a big concern for a lot of you. Um, and I am totally with you on that. I used to think that I had a small classroom. Uh, I, I've had many classrooms over the years of different sizes, but I used to think, you know, oh, woe is me, my classroom is so small, until I actually started um, working with the Association of Education of Young Children, the, my local AEYC, and, and I went to lots of child care centers and I saw how small uh, some of the classrooms really were. So I know some of you are in a challenging, tight space, so science can be tough. Um, but I think that's a great topic for a future broadcast, and I certainly will consider that, because small classrooms are very, very tough. Sometimes um, the people that make the decisions, you know, they think, well, small people, so small classroom. And I'm like, no, actually, the smaller the child, the more space they need to move <laughs> in for stuff, right? So Irving, Texas, hey, Cincy, you're close. All right. So my first thing that I keep in my science center are these magnet wands. Um, and they attract things. Now, of course, it would have made sense if I had something magnetic. Well, maybe this is magnetic. I found a screw sitting here on the table. It is. Oh, yay. That worked out well. So they can see if objects attract. So you would have some objects. Now, this is obviously too small that you would not use this. But have some objects that attract and don't attract to magnets um, that they can swipe these magnet wands over and I did not know this at first these magnet wands are actually used by quilters to pick up pins um, so I found one of these um, I forget if it was at my mom or my mother-in-law's house once they're both quilters and I was like why do you have a magnet wand sitting on the table next to you and it was because if you run this over the carpet or wherever you've been quilting it will pick up all the pins so you can find these at your local craft store um, I've seen them at Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby they almost always have these because they are used in crafting to pick up pins so very cool magnet ones you're gonna to want to check those out and because they're at the craft store they're very inexpensive now if you buy them from a teacher supply store they're gonna charge you more um, because now it's not a, a pin picker upper it's a, it's a magnet one for educational purposes <laughs> so check these out at your local craft store um, and these are magnet ones and in on the link uh, the science link that's coming in the comments or has has come through already uh, there's probably a link to these on that science page as well if you're having difficulty finding them um, I like the horseshoe magnets but they have just two ends that attract so sometimes it can be difficult for kids um, now you're gonna want some magnifying glasses right uh, magnifying glasses are great I don't know why, but kids always like to lick them, and I think it's because they look like lollipops. <laughs> um, so I always teach them first not to lick them. That's not what they're for. I show them how to use them, do some science experiments with them, and once children have learned how to handle magnifying glasses, and you can certainly get um, safety ones that you know they can't break, um, once they've learned how to use them, I will put them in my science center for independent practice and exploration so kids can come to the, their own conclusions. So, hey Debbie, 
hi i gave you a shout out in my last broadcast nice to see you i love to see familiar faces so welcome everybody so we're talking about sensational science center ideas and so these are some materials that i keep in my science center um, so i've already talked about magnet wands and now we're talking about magnifying glasses um, and then I wanted to talk about, oh, and these are some really cute ones. These are kid friendly, like super kid friendly. And these are from Learning Resources. Oh, and I think they, I think they twist too. They do something else. I can't remember how they work. If you don't know how something works, you just give it to a little kid, right? They figure it out instantly. <laughs> All right. So magnifying glasses and then um, eyedroppers are great. Now you sometimes have these in your um, sensory table and your water table, you can have these there. Um, but these pipettes, I found out that the real name for these is pipettes. <laughs> um, but we often call them eyedroppers here in the US. Um, but these are some kid-friendly ones that have a nice kid-friendly bulb here, probably also by learning resources. And they can pick up, you know, colored water and drop it on coffee filters or whatever it is that you want. But they love, love, love to do this. Another good one I've seen is the, um, you know, those little like bath mats that have little suction cups on the bottom. If you turn those upside down, then they can drop one drop into each of the little suction cups. So that's like one to one correspondence as well. Um, so these little pipettes are great. Um, the ones you get at the craft store aren't really kid friendly. They're like really tiny and thin. So I prefer these kid friendly ones. Wonderful. The woodlands, I hope you're safe. How do you feel about the kids using, this is from Rochelle. How do you feel about the kids using science materials in a non-science way? My kids will take the magnifying glasses and binoculars and pretend to be superheroes or whatever instead of doing science. Well, that's gonna happen no matter what you're doing. Don't they always take the stuff from the math center into the dramatic play center and the sand over to the whatever center? They always do that. So that's a personal preference. So if you wanted to set boundaries, you could. But I feel like because science is in the world around us, when it comes to little kids and science and free exploration, it's all about the world around us. So if they're using a magnifying glass to look out the window or uh, magnet wands to see if they can attract bugs on the floor or whatever, that that's usually okay with me. But if you need to set some boundaries, you certainly can do that. Another thing that you can do is to give them certain tasks um, for example, if, there, if you have magnet wands out and you have objects that attract and don't attract, you could have clipboards there with a T chart and you could have, you know, um, an attract and then a not attract, you know, international no symbol and they would have a task to record, you know what I mean? So there's a task for them to do. Um, so you could have things like that as well. Thank you for the question. These kid-friendly eyedropper droppers are probably from learning resources. I get a lot of my stuff from them. I don't work for them. I don't know them or anything, but they have a lot of kid-friendly science stuff. So uh, let's see. Michigan, Mountain Grove, Pipette. Yes, Pipettes. That, that was the name. Deborah Stewart. Y'all, Deborah Stewart is in the house. Let's give Deborah a shout out. Deborah is from Teach Preschool. Yay! If you don't know her, her blog, you must, must, must go over to teachpreschool.org. We have lots of Michiganders here tonight. I'd like to welcome the Michiganders and let you know that, hey, I'm a fellow Michigander. I was born and raised there. So although I am broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas, I am transplanted. Okay, wonderful. Yes, Deborah is here, Albany, Minnesota. So we're talking about um, sensational science center ideas. There's Deborah. Hey, it's so exciting. I feel like my principal just walked walked in to observe me now that Deborah's here. You know that feeling when like somebody important comes into your classroom and you're like, oh no. <laughs> Deborah has some great ideas, so check her out for sure. All right, so we've talked about some of my favorite science tools, uh, magnet wands. You can see this one's well loved. That's a price tag on there. Um, we've talked about magnifying glasses and pipettes. I think that's how you say it. 
and um, we're going to talk about some more uh, kid-friendly stuff for the Science Center. So like I said, I think science is all about free exploration, inquiry, discovery. So once you use these materials with the kids and they know what they are, because most kids haven't used a pipette before, right? So you kind of want to use them with the kids to get them comfortable with them. I would probably do a coffee filter experiment with colored water, you know, get them understanding what these are for. And then you can put them out for free exploration in the Science Center. There we go. Yes, I'll never be a native, Renetta. Okay. Um, another thing that you can put in your science center. Oh, I love to teach cheap. Who likes to teach cheap? <laughs> dollar store. I am a dollar store diva. They have science stuff quite often in the Target dollar spot. And these were um, Petri dishes. They're plastic. These are plastic, so they're kid safe. Um, and what you can do is you can put things in here and then super glue the lid shut, you know, because they're gonna pull the lid off. So you can put things in here that they can examine. So if you're worried that, for example, I was showing you a moment ago, I don't know where it went. Oh, I have this little screw thing here. You know, let's pretend it's something that the kids wanted to examine. And you could have these super glued shut with your magnifying glass. You know, and you can have the kids examine what's inside of these. So if you want to have something that's protected from them, you can use these little Petri dishes from um, Target Dollar Spot. They have them about once a year. They have lots of science stuff, and they have some really good science stuff. Um, I, they've had magnifying glasses and pipettes and Petri dishes and all kinds of stuff before. So these are plastic Petri dishes. So there's lots of ways you could use these, right? Um, oh, you're welcome to come, Linda. Everyone is welcome. Parents are welcome, grandparents, caregivers, anyone who has a child that's important to them and wants to learn about ideas. Yes, these could totally be for insects. Um, the science stuff in Target, I have seen it come out usually in like a, around, just after the back to school stuff goes away. So probably August because, you know, they put back to school stuff out in June, right? Huh. Um, but Petri dishes are great. I don't know where else you can get these plastic Petri dishes. I've never seen them before, but at the Target dollar spot, and they're not a dollar per, they're like two per, uh, so they're 50 cents each. Hey there. Um, another thing that I've done before I, that kids love, and now you can totally make these yourself. Okay, you can make these with colored saran wrap or cellophane. Um, I think saran wrap is a brand name, but it's colored cellophane. So I've made these before. These are color paddles, and kids love to put these in front of their eye, and then everything they look at is in that color. You know, so this can also, you know, you can do this with kids when they're learning colors, but it's a great way. Now you can color mix, but you can make these. So you can use a cardboard tube like a paper towel tube and you can put colored cellophane around the end and, it, and cellophane comes in different colors. We have got blue and we've got yellow and around Easter they sell pink, you know, all that stuff. So you can put those on the end and they can look through and see the world in the different colors. I've seen people put them on small paper plates, cut out the middle of the small paper plate and then put the cellophane in the middle um, so they can actually hold the paper plates up and look. So that is another idea. Thank you, Kathy. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Oh, light table. If you need a light table idea, Deborah Stewart over at Teach Preschool has a great tutorial on how to make your own light table for super cheap. So check that one out. I have not done that yet, but I hear it is to die for. Um, Danielle says you can use the color petals all together with the old school flashlight and the color shines through the top white again. Ooh, very cool. Thank you for sharing that, Danielle. Yes, please share your science ideas. This is a resource for everybody that's joining us tonight. Can you laminate cellophane? Well, the running joke at my last school was that if you let them, teachers would laminate their underwear. So there is somebody out there who has tried to laminate cellophane. So <laughs> somebody will answer that question, I am sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Another thing, I love these because now they have these in the um, Dollar Tree. They have these at the Dollar Tree. These are uh, tweezers. These are great for picking things up. 
So you can use these in your science center, but you can have them in your math center or anywhere. But they have these at the Dollar Tree now in the teacher section. So I certainly think that the Dollar Tree is listening to teachers and supplying us with things that they know we will use in the classroom. So these are great. Uh, your husband just asked, what are you watching? I know, right? What are you watching? Um, somebody's husband is building a light table. Ooh, lucky. Um, but these tweezers are great. So you could put things out there that the kids could um, pick up and manipulate and move around, like when you're doing bug themes, leaves, anything. But twe tweezers are always wonderful, and they have these at the Dollar Tree. Yes, your Missy's kids love these tweezers. Wonderful. Another thing that I've put in my Science Center before, these are really cheap. You can get these at, in the party supply section of Walmart but there are these little prisons here and the kids absolutely love these. And I tell them, you know, it, it's, uh, that's how some bugs see things, they love it. So if you look through there, of course, it distorts everything. So they usually have these in the party supply sections of places like Walmart or your local party supply store like Party City. Uh, so these little prisons are great too. Um, one of the ideas, and I have a whole science section over at Pre-K Pages, and that link is coming in the comments. So you can go over to Pre-K Pages, and you can see um, all of these ideas and more as well over on the blog. Um, but this next one is a smelly bottle. And these are, um, now they, water has different names in different places because it, it's sold under different brands, but these are, I believe, the Ozarka Aquapod bottles. If I'm correct, I'm not sure. And they might be called something else where you live, but these are round little sports bottles for kids, okay? Um, and what I did was I put a one of these types of spouts on it, you know, the kind that you pull up to drink a sports top. I put that lid onto this bottle because the opening is the same as any other water bottle. So I took another water bottle that had this lid and I stuck it onto this bottle, which didn't. Um, and then I filled the bottle with potpourri. Okay, so kids love to smell things. They like different scents, right? So I bought potpourri at the Dollar Tree of different scents. So I have vanilla and I have this one as some kind of red color. And then what they do is they hold it. I teach them to hold it right in the middle. If you can see my two hands here, right in the middle because their inclination is to stick it up their nose. I'm like, it's not nasal spray and squeeze it. Put it in and I teach them to do this. Now both of their hands are occupied, right? and they breathe it in and they try to identify and this is called I call it a smelly bottle so you can have several of these out in your science center and the kids can squeeze them and sniff them but I do model this in a whole group first we take turns passing them around holding it in the middle and smelling it in because it, it does tend to go up their nose <laughs> you know <laughs> I don't know. It's a nasal spray. It's not a nasal spray. Um, certainly, you can packing you can packing tape or hot glue the lid shut. Um, but uh, this one is very very old, very very old bottle. So they last for a long time, and the scent of the potpourri really lasts for a long time. This bottle is ancient, and you can still smell the scent on these. So, and you get a whole giant bag of potpourri, and all you need is a little bit. So it's a good cheap activity. Um, do you leave science items out all year or do you rotate seasonally? So what I do with my science center is anytime I introduce something to the children in a whole group or even a small group, any kind of science item, then it, it immediately after that, after we've explored it together, it goes into my science center if it's safe for them to use independently for independent practice because children need to practice independently what they've learned and because science is a is a thing where kids need to explore and discover make predictions and come to their own conclusions um, children really need an opportunity to handle these materials on their own so as that's why we have centers in the classroom for independent practice so um, to answer your question, do I change them out? So after I've introduced it, I put it into the center. And then if I see interest waning, you know, if kids are no longer using it, I might go over and use it myself because then they're going to, of course, come over and use it. Um, but if something is just really getting old, you can certainly change it out. So I add things to it and take things away as the kids' interests come and go. 
If you're having any connectivity issues, don't forget to refresh your browser and you should come right back. So your connection is gonna depend on how strong your connection on your end is to the internet. So where can you find these bottles? I got this at my local grocery store. They're like round little bottles for kids they can take in their lunch. They're water bottles. Um, and I just put a different lid on top. There is a link in the comments to the smelly bottles. Um, so you can find all the directions and information there over at Pre-K Pages. I'm glad you like the smelly bottle idea. Um, so that's another one. And of course, I always, always want to have books in my science center. I try to have books in every single center. Um, so usually what happens is I'll have a tub of books over there. At the beginning of the year, they're just, you know, pictures with the the words, you know, root, stem, whatever. They're very simple books so the kids can kind of read them independently. And then as I do things with the class that have a science focus, then I will read the book aloud and we'll do some kind of experiment or whatever. And then I will put that particular book over in the science center. I also have science books in my classroom library as well. So there are several book lists that I've compiled for you that you can use to find age appropriate science books for your classroom. Because one of the biggest challenges that I've had as a teacher is, is finding a age appropriate science books. So of course, anytime we introduce something to the kids, we like to have a nice, good read aloud to start off with. And it's very difficult to find age appropriate books on science topics for little kids. Of course, there's always, you know, your favorite read alouds like The Very Hungry Caterpillar and um, Planting a Garden, uh, Eating the Alphabet, things like that. But if you want like something non-fiction-y, uh, non um, that's going to have more factual information, but at a preschool level, there's three book lists coming in the comments below that you can just print out and take to your local library um, and stock your science center or your classroom library with. So, do you put sensory tubs in your science area or is that a different area for those? That's up to you. I've always had a separate sensory table, but quite often the concepts they're covering in sensory are also science concepts. So, you know, that's a personal preference. Um, yeah, I would put the sensory center close to the science center because, you know, they can both have water in them and, and so you want to have that in an area of your classroom that's a water area. Um, yeah, and Kayla says that she has a sensory bin in her science center, but she has a separate one too. So sure, it's a personal preference. That totally works. Absolutely. So books, 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 super important. Um, so there's lists of these books coming in the comments below. So you should be able to access them. What I did was I made physical science, a physical science list, an earth science list, and uh, I forget what the other, life science, a life science list. So there's three book lists there for you that you can access to find age appropriate science books. So wonderful. Um, just a couple more things before we go. Like I said, I'm a little bit behind tonight because I had so many technical difficulties. So I appreciate your patience. Let's see. So this is a, a cutting board from the dollar store. It's a wood cutting board. And I just hot glued stuff down on there of different textures. Of course, you could do this with blocks, like wooden cubes. You could glue this, this stuff on there. Um, but this one has it all laid out. It, basically, it's kind of like something that I saw at a, in an expensive teacher catalog once. And so this is like fuzzy fur. This used to be a cotton ball. <laughs> Tin foil, um, sandpaper, a chamois cloth, a bumpy tablecloth. And this is some bumpy wallpaper samples that I had and you can hot glue it on there and create this nice flat thing here and this would be what, like when you were studying um, like if you were learning in your classroom about textures or something um, this could be something that you could introduce to the whole group and have them interact with and then it could go into your science center and you could have you know you could have a task where they have to find things that feel like that you know what feels like this one what feels like this one and there's a link, I see it right there in the comments to the blog post I wrote about this particular science board. So that's one thing there. And let's see what other questions we have. Whoops. 
I'm so glad. Do you stick to science or you try to incorporate STEM in your classroom? STEM is very hot right now, so absolutely, you're definitely going to want to do that. Um, you can because STEM incorporates science and math. Those types of activities could be in either center. Rebecca says, if you haven't tried tapioca pearls yet, you need to look into that. I will. Oops, meh. Um, I will, Rebecca. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, let's see what else. Oh, you clever monkey is here. Hey. Um, you clever monkey says that she made a wall like that before. This the t texture wall, uh, board. Absolutely, that's great. Um, do you do a special lesson to teach care of the science tools? Anytime I introduce any of these materials to the kids, I'm always going to have, you know, like I'm going to show them, let's say, the magnet wand. So if we're going to be using magnet wands in the science center soon, I'm going to introduce this to them. I might read a book about magnets. I might have them make predictions and then and then we'll pass the magnet wands around and see you know maybe I'll have some things in a basket they can see if they attract so they're experiencing the magnet wand and then I'll say you know and if you would like to try this out it's going to live over here in the science center and I'm going to show them where it goes and then I might say something like so if you go over to the science center you know this week then maybe you can try it out too and see what attracts to the magnets and if you find things that are magnetic or non-magnetic so anytime I introduce anything before it goes in the Science Center, I'm going to do something with it with the kids. So I might actually introduce this whole group and then we might have a small group activity that week that we cycle through where we're using this together in a small group. So I have uh, opportunity to interact with the kids and the materials together to support them. And then it might go into the Science Center. So I don't think one giant lesson on all the tools is going to be as helpful as the individual like lesson that you're already doing about that topic so um, let's see thank you Gina says she loves the page and ideas thank you wonderful you clever monkey is another blogger that's here tonight she has a great blog you got to check it out I love to share stuff from her page so we've we've had Deborah Stewart stop by and you clever monkey wonderful um, so that was an answer to that question, and what else? These little these little um, test tubes. I don't know what I forget what they're called, but they're um, Steve Spangler Science is where I first bought mine from. But I think you can probably find them on Amazon. There's probably a link in my science page as well. But these are baby soda bottles that um, haven't been blown up yet. I know that's. It kind of is mind-blowing but they're plastic they're indestructible they're plastic and so you might notice this is a soda bottle top right here um, so you can put things in here and I like these because the kids can actually really hold them in their hand as opposed to some of the bigger sensory bottles that are actually quite difficult for them to handle um, so you can have, certainly have both I've had both of course as well but you can put small things in here so this would be a great one uh, for putting magnetic items in and seeing if they can attract this one's actually filled with alphabet colored alphabet pasta and I've had them use magnifying glasses with this one before to look for the first letter in their name so we're kind of doing science and literacy at the same time so I have tons of these um, baby soda bottle test tubes in the classroom filled with different things and so I kind of have a, a box like a you know a tub in my science center filled with these that I've introduced to the kids and that we've used before um, so they can use magnetic wands or magnifying glasses with them or whatever so these are really fun too and there's probably a link to these on my science page yes Rebecca says she's used the these they have a stand too yes wonderful I'm here um, every Monday and Wednesday um, and these are plastic yes these are soda bottles and they are before they're blown up and so they are totally plastic and they're very very sturdy and you can totally hot glue that lid on thank you Mel yes I'm on Mondays and Wednesdays I try to be 7 p.m. Central 8 p.m. Eastern although tonight we had some te technical difficulties that kept us out um, 
yes, ice experiments. There's so much out there. I do encourage you, and I don't think I have a link prepared for you, um, but I do encourage you to check out my science experiments and my science center boards on Pinterest. So if you follow pre-K pages on Pinterest, I pin tons and tons of science experiments and science center ideas over there. So, so that stuff is not just for me, it's from everybody out there in the interwebs so you can go over to Pinterest and follow those boards there. Um, alphabet pasta, I know, I got it from the dollar store. Yes, that's where I originally, Rebecca, that's where I originally got these test tubes from was a large teacher conference and then I, I think they sell them on Steve Spangler's website, stevespangler.com. Um, but a lot of educational um, retailers now sell them as well. Lakeshore has their own version, Learning Resources has their own version, but none of them are just the straight up uh, baby soda bottles like the ones from Steve Spangler. Steve Spangler is where I got these. Um, thank you, Rochelle, that's so sweet. Um, any other questions, Tom? Because uh, I have to get going, but I wanted to, uh, yes, this, this, this video will be, this broadcast will be available for you to watch from the very beginning as soon as I'm done talking tonight. So you just come back to the Pre-K Pages Facebook page if you, if you missed out because I, I was on a little bit late today. Um, you can watch the entire th thing straight from the beginning. You can share this broadcast out with your friends. So if you have teacher friends, uh, colleagues out there that you think could benefit from these ideas, feel free to share it with them. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, I'm sure it was the same person, Rebecca. Yes, uh, Steve Spangler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you see, Tom? You got a shout out from Rochelle. Yay. Thank you so much, guys. I sh yeah, there's endless possibilities with this, Rebecca. Like right now, I'm just scratching the surface of like going through and kind of walking people through the blog, the Pre-K Pages blog, and showing them what's out there. And then I can do science experiments and activities in the future. Absolutely, I plan on doing that. And that will be great because I don't have to do my hair because I will just shoot the, the activities instead of my face. So that'll be wonderful. Um, Oh, thank you from Australia. If you'd like to see the Science Center, um, the, there's a link in the comments here to um, my Pre-K Pages uh, website where I have pictures of every single center so you can see pictures of the Science Center. Absolutely wonderful. Yes, there it is. Isn't he great? All right, so to recap, I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages coming at you live from Dallas, Texas tonight. Um, and we were talking about sensational science center ideas. So if you wanna watch this from the beginning, welcome to our replay viewers. Watch this from, from the beginning as soon as I'm done live tonight. And <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Brenda. We will come back at you on Monday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. So thanks so much for stopping by tonight. I hope you have a great evening and enjoy. Bye.